guys, I'm Basement Horrors, and today I'm going to be reading you one true horror story that I found off of Let's Not Meet. Now the author of this story, the person who has experienced it, has given me permission, and I wanted to read it for you guys in a solo video. So I hope you guys do enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and in the description will be the link to the original story. Make sure you go there. Um, tell the um, person who experienced this what you think. Here we go. This story is entitled Man in the Night by Marvelous Platypus. In the last few days, my wife and I have traveled the length of our state to return to our hometown. I don't particularly like going there for a multitude of reasons. It took a funeral to get me there. And while mulling it over, I remembered an incident that took place six years ago, which I've never understood. My wife, then girlfriend, and I were post-college, back at home looking for jobs. We both grew up as poor southern girls in the sticks, so we've had our fill of scary incidents and other things that go bump in the night. But... Most of these things were kind of endearingly straightforward. Like, the robbers from the cow farm came back last night. My crackhead uncle broke down the door and stole my birthday money. Again. This was a sticky summer weeknight, around 2.30 a.m. Since we hadn't found work yet, our schedules were out of sync from the norm, and it wasn't unusual for us to go out that late. We decided to go for a drive and hit up the Taco Bell. While we were in the drive-thru, I noticed this brown 90s Buick parked in the shadows with, at least, I only saw, two passengers. One was an old and reasonably weathered man. This was a small town and nothing else in the area was open. There was, quite literally, no one else around. So it looked pretty out of place. But hey, that's none of my business. I mentioned it in passing to my wife, and we go to get our tacos. This brown Buick was parked so that anyone leaving the Taco Bell would have to pass it. I don't know when the old man got out of the Buick, but I do know that as we were slowly passing to get back on the road, he ran to our car and began banging on the driver's side window. Together, we made the split-second decision not to stop. My brain was screaming, red alert, danger and he beat on our car in an attempt to make us stop until we sped onto the main road. My heart was pounding so fast that I felt numb, but I kept the old man and the car in my sight. After a moment, I felt immense regret, and my primary thought is that these people were stranded and just needed a jump, or maybe they were homeless folks who hoped we had some food or change to spare. I immediately started asking my wife if we should try and check in on them in some way, or call the police in case they needed help. Old man might not have a phone. But what if they're homeless and the police are mean to them? All of this took place in under two minutes. The Buick is still clearly in view, and as we're quickly weighing this decision to call the police, the Buick bolts. I tried to get a plate number, but it sped away too fast for me to read. I had been scared, but not unnerved until that point. As my brain unthought on the drive home, I started trying to make sense of what just happened. The old man had clearly been trying to indicate some type of emergency in order to make us stop. So why did they drive away in such a hurry? How long had they been waiting there? What were they waiting for and what did they want? I still don't know. I don't think I want to find out either. So to those two people, Waiting in the dark in an old brown Buick in the middle of the night during the summer of 2012, let's not meet. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that story. I know this video was kind of short, but with the resources I have at the moment, um, I can't really make videos that are that long with good quality. Also, I was trying out a new um, recording style. I used my light with all the lights off in the room by itself. Um, someone actually commented it and told me that they thought that it would um, be more interesting if I had the lights off. It would be creepier if I had the lights off. 
and um, so I wanted to try it. And uh, I think I, I like it so far. I, I really do. Um, so the great suggestion from him. He also uh, mentioned that uh, the room that I was in added a creepy echo. And I did not do that on purpose, but thank you very much. Tell me what you guys think of my recording style, what you guys would do differently, because clearly you guys are super smart and have great ideas. So if you have any other ideas, please tell me. Also, if you have any of your own personal true horror stories or that of your friends or family that you would like me to narrate, um, just email me. My email is right here on the screen. It will also be in the description as well as my Instagram and uh, any other way that you need to contact me. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and go and look at the original story. Till the next video, make sure you all have a horrific day.